myself because I don't want to feel like I'm, as a city, telling any other entity in town what to do, but I want to bring it up as a suggestion for consideration of the board uh, about whether they want to make that ask. You don't know what response you'll get, and I'm not judging any of that. I'm just saying it's, it's possible that everyone should look within their own capacity to see how they could share the load in the community. Thank you, Kate. Art? Um, I think uh, maybe more of a specific outreach to gay and lesbian team. Okay. Ways. Specific outreach to gay and lesbian, LBGTP, yes. Q, teens. teens. Yeah. And? I think one thing I don't want to lose sight of is we need to do something about restoring the funding for the Eugene service station mm -hmm. so that the normal hours can be restored. Right That's now, coming to council. They're closed weekends. Right. So, so supporting that effort, and it's coming, it's already on the agenda. That's on correct. The docket. Great. Okay. Right. Uh, over here. Allow warehouse use rental as an indoor rest stop. So finding a site for an indoor rest stop. Right, and, and it, I mean allowed. I think what I mean is zoning change, but if, you know, where there are a lot of empty warehouses uh -huh. in this town that have running water and bathroom facilities, which would be more health maintaining for people than camping outside. And, and, and you're referring to that as for overnight use, not just yes. days. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, I was gonna piggyback on that and on your comment too, that uh, specifically finding sites that are appropriate for people with disabilities. Yes. May I ask your name, please? Jennifer Prince. A rest stop for disabilities. Is that what you mean by sites? A rest stop sites? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. she was mentioning the indoor shelter in the warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, it would be helpful. I wanted to know uh, when Charlie spoke, he spoke of the need for the Egan uh, doesn't have a youth site, and I was interested in how many how many youth. So it'd be helpful when people speak if they could quantify. What do, the, do you know? Do have oh, I, I for how many youth? I talked yeah. with Melissa, who's in charge of um, the youth end of Egan yesterday. Right. And she said an estimated 10 to 20 10, youth per 10, night were 10 to 20 during Hosea. Okay. Yeah, so last year. Okay. Uh, so you can share medical. Uh, we have a lot more volunteers from colleges asking us to train their students than we physically have room for. And it's huh? not just medical. Of course, the nursing students are probably the first ones Yeah, the family program and the social workers, etc. So finding places for them uh, would be university sponsored rest stop. That's one of the things we have. And you say room, you say room for room places we, for them to volunteer. We we, we just have we're at the park walks and we have the two tents and the bus right. and um, so university um, LCC and UBO are sending us their their people to train and we love training them sure. to work with our population. We just don't physically have room for as many people as they're sending us. There's no there's no geography to put them. So is it more training opportunities or more room for you? We well, I mean, we want to start the hospital. <laughs> that's a different conversation. I'm saying we if we had another rest stop or somewhere, we could send some more of our volunteers that don't have Sunday off but really want to help okay. to this other place, and those nurses and and doctors and healthcare professionals could train those nursing students, etc., in okay. a different location. Okay, all right. Excellent. Good. I thought I'd hand back over here. Maybe it's my fault, then you can. Uh, quickly, just expanding the car camping program in Springfield as well as well as Eugene. So, and th by that you mean from three to six? Is that what you're talking about? Or no, no. More, 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 more places. More, more money, more sites. Finding more sites in Springfield. Yes. Yeah, okay. Ken? Uh, this has to do with the criminalization issue. The, the punishments for people doing illegal camping have really become draconian uh, in Eugene. And right now, there's a lot of no trespassing signs that they put up uh, for which the punishment can be arrested in jail. Uh, those signs replace signs that said no camping, uh, where the punishment would be uh, a citation um, and a fine. So I think we need to de escalate a little bit uh, the level of punishment that's being laid out for people who are trying to find some place to sleep in the absence of sufficient uh, legal and safe places to. 
Okay, so addressing the, the, the specific punishments for uh, the, uh, violation of, of ordinances related to the homeless. Yeah, yeah, just finding a place. There still be people out there trying to find some places. Sure, okay. Lynn? You have to add to what uh, Kitty said. Um, a while back, uh, sometime in the last year, I read an article online about what they're doing in Portland, mm -hmm. and they were getting all the local governments together, the city, the county, I guess the other surrounding like suburbs, to do an inventory of all the land that they own that could be used to uh, set up homeless shelters. And I think that would be a really good thing for this board to do, to create such an inventory. Um, I would also add that we, we've got to stop taking places off the board, you know, which is what the city council has done. We need to get that thing about residential, either get that out of the rest stop ordinance or get it defined so that we all know what it means and it, it isn't up to the discretion of the city manager. Um, I'll stop there. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Anyone ever explored that? It's got a big open room. Yeah. So check out Red Cross as a location for uh, either the youth site or something else. Yeah. Kitty, you have to uh, All I was going to say, is, and I'm giving you my best thought. You may not like it, but it's the best one I got, which is I don't think the law is going to be changed in time for winter strategies. Mm -hmm. So I think that is something that that you may be able to move the council on over an extended period of time, but I don't think it's going to help out in the, in the short run. It, let me ask this, Kitty. Is it feasible to have a conference, conversation with EPD or Springfield about enforcement mm -hmm. uh, on, at specific times, like mm -hmm. specifically when Egan is open? Um, if we cite some, if, particularly if someone is camped and adequately, they've got a warm sleeping bag, and we're rousing them and forcing them to, and they, they have to then come to the shelter, overwhelming the shelter. So I'm just thinking that as a strategy of saying to the police department, could you just not be... So know. that's, a, it, it, my best advice on that would, would be take that on a different track. Ask for a meeting with the chief and sit down and talk about some of those issues and what the possibilities might be when you bring it to the council level, then it becomes an a. Uh, there's not you don't have as much flex. You're making a a, a black or white uh, decision. Whereas if they, you have a good conversation, you talk about uh, some of the challenges and ask what they can do to be um, more flexible. You might find some answers that you don't know are there. Okay. You All think right. that's Thank you. true, Todd? Yeah. I think that's Police are in uh, this awkward enforcement sure. law where if the camping is on private property and that owner calls in a complaint, then the police have a, an obligation to sure. respond. And if they left you on, left somebody on your back porch and you didn't want there, you'd be mad. Um, so we have to respect the complainant in that process. Uh, at the same time, I know the municipal court is very much interested in citations and have at least some steps in place so that even if you get one, get a ticket there or at least some ways that you can get that reduced or, or waived um, that I think there's room for improvement on, uh, but I know that they're aware of the issue at least. Yeah, but and what, I, what I'm not entirely sure about, and my point is, is when Egan activates, my concern is, is that we may find ourselves at capacity very quickly. And if I'm out on the street and I'm getting roused, you know, then I'm going to go to Egan. And if, I'd rather leave someone if they're safe, right? We had a case last year where the police brought in someone who was not safe, and, and I'm glad for that. But if they're safe, leave a bee on Egan nights. Don't force them into the shelter if they don't need to be there. Uh, so. I think going to the chief's level is the best way okay. to do that. Basically, you can wave the magic wand and say, when you go out, here's and everyone will say fine. All right. Okay. Thank you. Mark. Question for you. Would you be? 
I'm happy to make that call and have a meeting with a couple of colleagues. And would you be willing to sit in on that meeting? Uh, I'm in a little awkward hierarchical position in terms of doing that. Martin, let's, let, let, Wayne, we can talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, figure out the best strategy for how to approach I, I, the, you know, I can give you some input towards sure. how to connect, yeah. but uh, just that I've just switched jobs from working over there for the past 20 years, and it's uh, a much more structured Okay. Let me ask other ideas now. Or Jessica. I didn't expect to say this, but since uh, Mayor Piercy mentioned um, taking a different track mm -hmm. because it, it would take too long to change the ordinance, there is a part of the ordinance that gives the mayor uh, emergency powers. And I'm not going to do that. I, I know that you don't think in terms of doing that, mm -hmm. but if the um, if the Poverty and Homeless Board um, mustered enough uh, support for that idea, then there could be political support that could allow the mayor to do Give her that. political cover. So your idea is to yeah, create uh, support for an emergency yeah, decree. Yeah. Okay, all right. Put it on the, put it on the board. <laughs> no, I just want to say, I think continuing to have a public conversation and to provide education around it, what I see a lot of is that folks are very supportive of homelessness as long as it's not in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about, let's look at other areas for rest stops and, and what other neighborhoods can open up. Um, and that's all fine and dandy until it's in their backyard. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of our conversation does center around the city of Eugene, a little bit around the city of Springfield. But as somebody said earlier, there are folks who come into Eugene because of for camping. They can't do it outside of Eugene to have that happen. So I think it has to be a county-wide conversation. Sue? I think we need more real information about what the new liaison really represents. When the first camp was proposed to be in my neighborhood, two blocks away from me, I didn't bother going to the meeting because I figured, I know all my neighbors and they're all for it. And then a couple of new rich people that moved into my neighborhood they're the ones that took over that council meeting and made it look like everybody was against that camp. And that does not represent my neighborhood. <coughs> so a real poll with real information, <coughs> yes or no, that's a constituency, not just a bunch of crazy people sitting in a room yelling loud. <coughs> <laughs> you know, looking at it realistic, look realistically from a county point of view, we do have property close in, and it's, it's property close in that we really need because uh, a lot of folks don't want the transit to the other services that they receive. And, uh, and when it comes to an emergency like we had last year where it's, boy, it's tonight, we have to do it tonight. We don't want to get there again. So getting things in the pipeline. Last year we were able to, uh, for instance, get, get it, make it so the Wheeler Pavilion could be open. Uh, we, last year we were able to make it so that one of the uh, pods over at uh, over the uh, Martin Luther King facility could be open. Neither of those things actually happened, but we made it available last year. So things like that, on a moment's notice, if we get this pipeline in place now, so that uh, we don't have to scramble around at the county level, we have property both inside inside the city limits and very close to adjacent to, and inside the Springfield city limits. So, um, you know, and we have, uh, on the city council, Mayor, you have to count to four plus one. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the board, we have to count to three. Mm -hmm. And that is an easier number to get to. And, and right now we have a support of five people on the board. Right. And I can say that, five people, for making certain that uh, we don't get into the same situation as last year. So the county can, <coughs> can provide relief and try to do it as close in as possible. And we, do, we have buildings, not just fields, we have buildings. But I'm also talking about, like in Cottage Grove, there's a lot of camping that happens mm -hmm. out in, in the more rural areas surrounding that too. So I think Cottage Grove needs to be around the table mm -hmm. yeah. as well. Lawrence, I'm sure, wouldn't love to be a part of that discussion. Well, well Old Bridge know. also, for that matter. Yes. Right. The right. people who are living there. Right. Lawrence. So there that's are. where, so I understand about being close to services, but there are people who really would like to stay in their own community of origin. Um, and they can't because it's illegal for them in that community, so they come here. Jennifer, did you want to speak to this point? I'm thinking let's just um, Yeah, I did. Um, I, I had two questions when I was wondering. When you say get it in the pipeline, um, what does that mean, Commissioner? Like, what does that take? And and would you be the person that would 
run with that to make sure it gets in the pipeline? What does it take to designate these sites and the process for it, first of all? And second of all, I think one of the things we're talking about with the NIMBYism is that we, we could do a lot more to debunk myths about who is homeless and, why, and the story of people who are homeless and that, that could, we need to be really frank about these myths about who's homeless that these folks are all dead, you know, dangerous for children, and you know, you know all this stuff <coughs> that people say that in, increases the pressure on NIMBYism. Well, to both of those points, one, what does it take to get it in the pipeline? Well, it, makes, it takes it so that it's a phone call and not a decision. So all somebody has to do is make a phone call and the doors are unlocked, rather than make a phone call, well, let me call the right people so I can get the doors unlocked. So what do we do now in order to, to make that in place? I, you just did it. You know, so I would, uh, I'd, I would talk to the county administrator and make certain that uh, the things that we had in place last year at least would be available. Yeah, excuse me. But I want to make a distinction because I think there's one you made here in that what you're talking about is what, how we handle emergency nights, Precise. right? And not rest stops. Exactly. And, uh, and this was uh, the winter response is both, it's two pronged as far as one, two two. It's what do we do on a long term basis for people who need to stay for the winter? And what do we do now for people who are in danger tonight? Right. Yeah, and, and it is helpful to keep those two different things in mind. We need to add BLM and the Forest Service to this Is that list that Kitty had? Oh, right. Yeah, I didn't right. see. The BLM on the long list of places for rest stops. Charlie? So, also, I wanted to make sure on the uh, car giving expansion that we're talking about, you mentioned Springfield, but also in Eugene as well, because we have spots that we had to give up basically because we didn't have the funding for the 45 and the, and the garbage. But we do have some other spots available, we just need the funding, you know. I just want to add that that's another thing that's coming for council is, uh, is more money for um, more more for to expand those services. Okay, I had over here and then Wayne. Oh, I was wondering oh, if you could add. Wait, just a second. Okay. So I just want to capture, I don't want to lose anything. So, uh, Mayor, you said money is being discussed. What I'm saying is it's on our agenda okay. to bring a proposal before council to uh, add a third the fourth rest stop to uh, money for um, yes, uh, the for body the and, and, and the other one, service, service station. station. Service station. That's all coming. It's in the pipeline to come to council. They restored the hours, the cutbacks yeah, to the service yeah. station, fortified money. Recommendations for yes, by the Stay over here and then Good. five and then okay. Is there any chance we could like add in like the Lane County Parks? Think of Raynaud Armitage is um, one of the experiments that we have to do. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah